So we've really progressed in terms of our understanding now of the condition of the vessel. We've conducted non-destructive examinations around the inside of the vessel uh, over about 80% of the circumference. 20% uh, was inaccessible because of structures inside, uh, inside the vessel that are, are permanent. So we've developed a second generation of tooling to come in and conduct another set of inspections, again, to cover the unknown territory. And over the last few days, we've got great results from that, and we're filling in the picture quite quickly now. We've determined that there are nine sites on the outside of the vessel that have been eroded through uh, corrosion mechanisms that uh, we conclude are likely to require repair. So nine sites likely requiring repair. So we've made decisions about how we're going to repair the vessel. And we're proceeding now with a plan that has two approaches to doing what we call a weld buildup on the inside of the vessel. So this weld overlay will apply beads of weld repetitively to build up material on the inside of the vessel. The first of the two processes is to build up material on the inside of the vessel in the areas where there's been uh, loss of uh, uh, vessel material through corrosion. Um, and the process we'll use is a, is a weld build up, uh, very sensitively applied with some tooling that will make vertical applications of weld to increase the, the vessel thickness at these nine areas around the inside of the vessel. On top of that, we're also proceeding with an application of horizontal weld buildup that will go around the inside of the vessel covering about 220 degrees or more than half of the inside of the vessel surface. This is what gives us full confidence that we can meet all the code requirements and the quality requirements to return the vessel into full service. Of course, our primary objective is to execute the repair safely and to execute it in a way that will give us a vessel lifetime going well into the future to meet all of our objectives, to continue to operate the energy reactor and produce the medical isotopes. So it's important to have people trained so that the equipment can be reliably operated, so that we've looked ahead and identified all of the hazards and so that it will generate a predictable outcome so that we'll know exactly what's produced and it will meet all of the quality assurance requirements and all of the code requirements to meet the vessel repair. So we've reached the point in the return to service project where we're ready to do a full height mock-up of the tooling that's necessary to make the repairs to the vessel. And so here we are in the NRX reactor building and this is our full height mock-up of the interior of the vessel. It's a quarter segment of the vessel. And this has uh, been constructed in order to test out the tooling and do training on the people that need to operate these tools to do a whole wide range of activities. So this is a complicated undertaking. It's a complex choreography of engineering and design, operations, tool development, training, corrosion experts and evaluations. It's been a real challenge over the last few months to gather all the information and enable us to make these decisions. But now we're at the point where we're able to commit that the repair will be done in the first quarter of 2010. And we've got detailed plans now that take us out through these parallel scenarios and give us confidence that we can make that happen.